Oh, that is brilliant. They knew they were going to be on TV. Are they going to be roaring at the end of the evening? Hannah, I thought he showed amazing maturity last year, and he's going to need to do so again, because that hurt earlier this week. It really hurt. I do wonder if you can do that twice, though. It's one thing to do it in Eugene last year, and he would have been so focused on taking that title, as you said, Rob, and to get out kicked by not just another British athlete, but another Scottish athlete. <laughs> he must have felt like it was deja vu. But there's also that illness. Inga Britson's been very public about saying he struggled with a bit of a cold, a bit of a sore throat in the lead up to that 1500 final. And if you're slightly off your game, that's really going to test you. And I think for me, this men's 5000 metre final, the field, they have to make it fast. If they lead this slow and they let them dawdle around, Inga Britson is going to wipe the floor with a lot of them. Great insight there from World Championship medalist Hannah England. The tactics are key here. Mohamed Katir is on the inside. He won't be frightened of going hard. 12.45, and he's trying to bounce back from the disappointment of not making it into the 1500 final, the event in which he was the bronze medalist last year. Jacob Croft, silver last year, and then took a Commonwealth bronze less than a fortnight later. He won the Kenyan trials. He is a brilliant athlete. So too is the man next to him. Aragawi, fourth in the 10,000, but he's the fastest man in the world this year and the fifth quickest in history. Nordas. There were two Norwegians on the 1500 podium. Nordas got the bronze. There's Chilimo of Uganda. Paul Chilimo, an Olympic medalist. Stewie McSwain fell in the heats and was upgraded to the final, rightfully so. Kip Karui just to Inga Britson's left. He's the World Junior Cross Country Champion. But here's the defending champion. The star of the Norwegian team, but he's yet to get a goal. Silver in the 1500, and he was bitterly disappointed. Umaiz of Spain, the national champion. Watch for Gebri Hewat. He is right back to form. Won a medal as a teenager 10 years ago, and he's got his form back to where it was. You've just got a glimpse of... Grivalia there of Guatemala as we watch Kajelcha. I'll give you the runners and riders that the cameras are sweeping past as we get into the early stages. Kajelcha is a world indoor champion. I first watched him in 2014. He's an absolutely incredible athlete. Ishmael, the Arab champion there for Djibouti. Mohamed Ahmed on the outside. He is a double global medalist. Got a bronze in uh, Doha and a silver in Tokyo. This is about Inga Britson. This is about redemption. The men's 5,000 metre final promises much. Four of the eight fastest men in history are in this race, along with all three medalists from 12 months ago. It has been lightning quick on the circuit this year, and these medals will be hard earned. As Hannah England was saying before the race began, They've got to make this an honest pace and try and hurt Jakob Inga Britson, who's in the middle of the pack. He hasn't run a 5,000 all year, although he did set a world best over two miles in Paris, but that's as far as he's run on the circuit this year, as Mo Ahmed, the two-time global medalist over 5,000 metres, hits the front for Canada. Mo Ahmed is very, very experienced. He ran a fantastically fast race in Florence at the Diamond League there. There are fast times all over the shop. And he's leading at the moment. But here we'll have a look at Yaroslava Mohucic in her attempt at 190. This is her opening height, Mohucic. And she's done absolutely fine with that. No issues for the Ukrainian superstar. You mentioned, Rob, perhaps a slight dip in the middle of the season. She started very dominantly, lots of wins on the Diamond League circuit, and then took a few defeats, but sometimes athletes go back into training, and that's why. <coughs> Nicola Olishlag is wearing the green bib because she is the world-leading athlete in her 2.02 clearance. She's spoken very eloquently about the disappointment of last year. It was just fifth in Eugene and no jumps over two meters, but it did teach her, she said, that she could enjoy her career without jumping over two meters, and now she gets both. She's jumping over two meters this season and having the time of her life. She goes over 190 with her first jump of the, com of the competition. I think she's got a great chance tonight. She's in fine, fine form this season. She is the best jumper in the world this year with 202. Back with Mo Ahmed. The first lap, by the way, was 66s, which is 
mid-13s. Oh, look at this. What an instant injection of pace from Kip Karui, the World Junior Cross Country Champion. I tell you what, I've had the privilege of watching 5,000 and 10,000 metre races at major championships for a long time. I've seen injections of pace early on before, but never something quite as explosive as that with only two laps run. Quite looking forward to seeing what this equals out to over the next lap. We have a 66 and then a 70, so perhaps Kit Karui sensing that the whole group is slowing down to 70 second lapping, which is just too slow. And Kip Karui, as a, as a cross-country runner, so he's the world junior cross-country champion, he's got very little experience at this level. But this is what I love from cross-country runners. If you play around with that speed, we call it fartlek in training, and you spike your lactic and you come back down and you ask things at the field, um, the better you are over cross-country or perhaps steeplechase, the more you're going to be able to cope with this. But Kip Karui, he's just gone. He's just asked, asked everyone else, saying, come on then, see if you can come with me. He's got some 30 or 40 metres over the field. It's Oscar Chalimo who's now taken up the challenge of closing him down. He got the bronze last year. That was a 62.3 second lap. That is why he has suddenly moved away from an absolutely loaded field. But all credit to him, Chalimo. And that on his shoulder is Ishmael, the Arab champion. Gressier, the excellent Frenchman. He's a good, uh, good cross-country runner. I love cross-country. I, I think it's a big part of the distance running community. And I know the president of the World Athletics, Sepco, always talks about what a great winter it gives you, whether you're a middle distance runner or a long distance runner. But what bravery from the 18-year-old. The rest of the field strung out behind him. It was too slow. And in the pace they were running at, it was definitely playing into the hands of Jakob Ingebrigtsen, who's second at the back with Yomif Kajelcha, just now moving up a couple of places. Brilliant running by the Kenyan. The, the, the over-exuberance of youth or a deliberate tactic before the race, do you think? I think this is OK, I'm happy with this. Let's have a look at the next lap, 65, so he's slowed ever so slightly. I think the burst to go to, to the front was so fast, and I don't think that the youngster is slowing down quite yet, but... Oscar Chalimo at the moment just doing all the work for the rest of the field and the other athletes would be delighted. We see this sort of thing in the Tour de France, someone goes tearing off and everyone can work together. Chalimo just gliding wide here saying, come on, I'm not going to do all the work to pull the rest of you back towards the Kenyan athlete Kip Kaburi. That gap is, it's not growing, but it's also not shrinking. Well, he's ensuring that the pace is honest. Inga Britson's still not interested. He's just at the back there, and the very, very experienced Paul Chilimo on his shoulder. Chilimo got a silver back in Rio. Inga Britson second from the back, no move from Katia, although he's up onto the shoulder, or just behind now, Chilimo. And it's now the athlete from Djibouti hogging the inside, Ishmael. And look at this, Aragawi, the fastest man in the world this year, decides enough is enough this gap needs to narrow and he's taking Gebri Hewat with him and Kajelcha moving up towards the front and it's another 65 second lap I think Gebri Hewat might be a factor tonight he kind of disappeared he won that medal in Moscow 10 years ago as a teenager got a medal in Beijing and in Rio but he hasn't done much since but he's exploded back to his best with a 12.42 as the cameras focus on Inga Britson towards the back Gebri Hewat might be a factor tonight I agree Rob I think Gebri Hewat has got the experience he's been on global podiums and he is back to his best but I'd say the same for Aragari as well he's been there and thereabouts but running even faster than he ever has and the third Ethiopian down there Yomif Kajalcha They've all got experience in bucket loads, and I think Aragari is showing here. He waited, he tried to get someone else to do the work, but this is this first significant move we've seen from the chase pack back towards the Kenyan athlete. And they're closing. The gap is now, sometimes it's hard to tell head on, but it is, we're side on, and it, they're almost about to catch him up. Um, Part of the reason for that was Aragawi deciding enough's enough, and also he slowed down. The Ethiopians sharing a sponge there. Remember, it's over 30 degrees in the stadium, and there's not much wind and comfort or relief down there as the 18-year-old early leader Kip Karui is swallowed back up by the pack. Inga Britson 
has moved up a few places. He's now just in the middle of your picture, running alongside Abdi Hamid Noor. And watch for Noor if it gets slower. The American won the US champs with a 53.7 second last lap. I wonder whether Inga Britson's going to have to run that quickly. I wonder if he's got it in his legs because the defending champion hasn't run a 5,000 before coming here to Budapest. But they're all back together again now. And interesting, Hannah, to see what Arigawi does with this. Does he slow it down or does he try and inject a little bit of pace now as Gebri Hewat takes up the reins? Let's watch to see the pace on this next 400. That was better. And inside 65. I think this is a big move from Gebri Hewat, just trying to stretch things out properly this time and not just for two laps. Uh, Gebra Hewat, we mentioned that experience he's got. And Aragari with that brilliant time that he ran in Oslo, the fifth fastest ever, the 10 second personal best. He did all the work for me when the pacemaker stepped aside. He was pushing and pushing. And I was surprised by that because I hadn't seen him run it, this that well on the circuit so far in the season or over the last couple of years. 8.13 through three kilometers is not lightning quick, but the way they're doing it, just chipping away at the laps and Gibra Hewat leading the charge at the moment. Great move from Luis Grijalva of Guatemala. He's in third place at the moment. It was fourth in Eugene for him. That was a big breakthrough performance and he's improved this year, lowered his personal best as national record. Just tucked in there, running a very savvy race for me, not running any extra distance and just in third place. He's a good athlete, Grivali, and he took massive confidence from running so close to a podium finish. I think Gebri Hewat has actually slowed it down just a fraction there. He's, uh, the rest of the group are still there. Remember, we had that lightning quick 62 plus change from the World Junior Cross Country Champion, Kip Karui. Imagine having that much confidence at the age of 18, tucking on the corner. You can hardly see him there behind the lumbering figure of Yomif Kajelcha, but the Early leader now back in the middle of the pack. Inga Britson just putting his hand out there to indicate to uh, Noor, as the camera's focusing on Katir, he just wanted Noor to leave his heels alone. He was getting clipped there, Inga Britson, who's now at the back of that group. We've got around four athletes beginning to become detached, one of whom is Nordas, who got a bronze in the 1500 metres. And interesting that Chalimo's off the back. He got a bronze medal last year, the Ugandan. So, there's a group forming here with four already beginning to feel the effects. Well, we've just passed the 1500 meter mark to go, so that's familiar ter territory for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. and he moves up to the furthest he's been in this field so far. And also Mohamed Katir of Spain, he's very, very good over 15. He would have been bitterly disappointed, as, as you said, Rob, to fail to make that 1500 meter final. When you talk about an opportunity for redemption, Katir in the full red strip there of Spain just behind Jakob Ingebrigtsen will be desperate to get another global medal here in the 5,000. Somebody needs to make a move here. Aragawi's gone to the front and it's been solid pace. 63s and 64s. But there's still a big, big group of athletes here. Aragawi looking over his shoulder, needs to make sure he doesn't get distracted and trip himself up. Aragawi from Gebri Hewa. And look at this from Gravali. He's got a really distinctive style and stride, the Guatemalan. As Crop, uh, Inga Britson's got his heels clipped there as Gressier also had to move out a little wider. 62.1. That was a little quicker, and that's why one or two have become detached. Inga Britson, the defending champions in fifth. But this is an absolutely loaded field and a big, big group of athletes still in contention. These are the four trying to reattach themselves to the uh, big group, but they've got a long way to go to do so. McSwain and Neuer, perhaps the next casualties of this group. They're starting to spread out ever so slightly. Aragari pouring the pressure on at the front, and suddenly, this is what happens in a 5,000. You think you've got laps for days, but all of a sudden, just 800 metres to go. These men will have butterflies in their stomachs if they're still in contention now they'll know if they put every foot right in the next 700 meters if they can gauge their effort correctly do the correct defensive moves have a big aggressive move for a win Gressier looking up at the big screen he's hanging in incredibly well there in third place but Aragari didn't want to give up the lead he fought Grijalva here at this stage it's 600 meters to go the positioning and the effort over the final circuit of this 400 are going to be absolutely crucial. Inga Britson looks for space on the inside. There's loads of traffic. 
This is going to be a brilliant final 500 metres. Gressier looking for a gap on the inside, but it isn't there. And look at this from Kevry Hewa. They take the bell in the final of the men's 5,000 metres. Now the burn-up begins. Kevry Hewa, who was on the podium 10 years ago as a teenager, he's rediscovered the best form of his life. Now Katia down the back straight, the Spaniard who didn't make the final of the 1500. Still Inga Britson trying to close. Remember, the defending champion hasn't done a 5,000 all season long. Now the Norwegian comes. Can he harness the disappointment from the 1500 and retake this crown once again? He looks over his shoulder. What a run by Katia. They've got a gap on the rest of about five or six metres. He needs to find something here. He wants to be regarded as an all-time great. To do that, he's got to bounce back from the 15. Inga Britson with the best victory of his career. There was the heart, there was the belief, and there was the determination. The mark of an amazing champion is how they bounce back from defeat. And Inga Britson has roared, roared back to the top of the world. Back-to-back 5,000-metre titles. I know he was desperate for the 1,500, but that, in the context, is the best victory of his life. And what a silver for Mohamed Katia. He, too, bouncing back from his disappointment of not making the 1,500 final. Wow! This 5,000 was fabulous. Jogging off, it was a medal last time round for him, a silver, and it's going to be bronze. But Jakob Ingebrigtsen, that was absolute perfection. 2.21 for the final kilometre. And I couldn't read that facial expression down the home straight. He was looking up at the board. Was that to make sure he didn't have to move, move wide to protect his position? Was it fear that he was feeling very tired? And was anybody going to come on his shoulder? Katir made a very, very good move coming into the bout. He put himself in perfect positioning. And I felt that Katir, because he had three, four metres on Ingebrigtsen, that maybe he'd done enough, and he realised the opportunity, we're going to watch the replay as well, he realised the opportunity with 300 to go, that if he struck then, he was going to ha have even more of an advantage over Ingebrigtsen, but he just couldn't hold him off in the last 50. You're an elite athlete. You understand how it feels to win, and you understand how it feels to lose. Tell me how much mental strength this victory took from Ingebrigtsen. It's compartmentalisation. Inga Britson would have been devastated after the 1500. And perhaps you know, having that excuse, knowing that he'd been a bit sick, is going to help him ever so slightly. But you've got to just park that and, and calm yourself down. You need to sleep, you need to eat, you need to jog. There's things you have to do to get yourself ready for another major championship final. And, and I wonder if Inga Britson just didn't allow himself to totally accept what had happened earlier on in the week and poured his energy here instead. You were quite right, Katir ran a beautiful race tactically. He was definitely in shape to get a medal in the 15, but you've got to get in the final to give yourself a chance. And they tore away from the rest of the field. Without question, the greatest victory of Inga Britson's career. Bouncing back from disappointment in the 15, he is going home from Budapest with a gold. Katir, a superb...